Welcome to another episode of His Wife, Her Husband. I am Shamika, his wife. I am Patrick, her husband, and our purpose is to help you build and sustain your marriage from a biblical perspective. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at me when I'm looking in the camera, mm-hmm. and I can actually look at the, the, the actual camera. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, why, why, do, why does it look like I'm, I'm off or looking off? But yeah, anyway. Let me get comfortable. Get comfortable, Shamika. I think I got too comfortable. I think I got, I know I got, I think I got too comfortable. You want to sit up, you want to sit up like this? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Take it away, Shamika. Shamika's hosting today. So. I don't know what the subject is, so. Oh, that's, y'all, you sure don't. Mm -mm. Well, let me tell you. First of all, let's thank God that we made it through 2023 and that we are privileged to be here another year. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we have made it into 2024. And I know that they have all these look catchy little phrases, you know, more in 2024. Just, you know, just right. yeah, church life, whatever. But, uh, the you know, prophecies. yeah, but I do want to uh, want us to be mindful to to take it, take to go a little deeper in the things of God, to go just a tad bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, what's coming to my mind is the parable about uh, when you, when, when uh, I, oh, I can't remember exactly how we go, but it's talking about going one mile and then going another mile. Right, that's you know in the, the, um, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. The and sermon, mm-hmm. Right, he's telling if, uh, if one asks you to go one mile, you go two miles. Yeah. Contextually, he's not, Contextually, I don't think he's literally meaning that. I think he's because if you look at the whole context, he's using hyperbole language mm-hmm. to get a point across to go above and beyond when you're doing something. Okay, to give and it so, your best. And so that would definitely go in line with exactly what I'm saying. So this year, go over and beyond in giving your best to your spouse, and mm-hmm. giving your best to your to to the to our Lord and Savior, to giving your best to your to children, your marriage. to yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I said all that, but you know what? Thank you for bringing it up because this channel <laughs> is about helping marriages. And sometimes I do bring up, or we do bring up other entities, but just know that the main uh, focus is marriages. Mm-hmm. And so that does not mean that the things that we share cannot be applied to other areas. Uh, also, I would like to give the disclaimer that it is always understood that uh, we seek first and foremost our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost in all things right. as an individual as well as as a couple. So even though I may not say Jesus or I may not say Jesus Christ or our Lord and Savior in every other phrase or sentence, know that he, he is exuding in my life and he is never exempt from anything that I say. Mm-hmm. Um, and so by the same token, even when turning and sharing life with Patrick and Patrick sharing life with me, <laughs> I am not, <laughs> we are not substituting uh, in any shape, form, or fashion one another's allegiance or our worship to the Lord in worshiping one another. We're not uh, worshiping one another, though. Mm-hmm. That's why I said we're not okay. doing that. Right. We are worshiping gotcha. the Lord. We're not doing that. Uh, but our responsibility is to steward well and manage well the institution of marriage that God has given us here on earth mm-hmm. to glorify him and to make known the mysteries of uh, of his relationship with us. Right. Um, and so this is the gift that God has given us. That's good. Uh-huh. So this video is uh, going to be about how to safeguard your marriage this year. Hmm. Ways that you can safeguard your marriage. And I and, and it's interesting, but I was in my quiet time, and I was just reflecting and thinking, you need a pen and paper? Yeah, because when you said that, I, I, a question immediately came up. Okay. Hopefully it'll get answered. You just turn the page. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of, um, there are, we are, we are in, a, in a place like in life where, I didn't want that torn, though. I, I'm not. I'm oh, okay. Not I saw it. Torn. I mean, torn I didn't different. do it, though. Okay. It's okay. I just want you to know. I didn't know if you were still it. <laughs> ah. But uh, we are in a time in our society and culture where uh, things are very troublesome. Uh, it's very turbulent. And so um, 
yeah, we want to make sure that we do our part in preserving and protecting uh, what God has given us to steward and manage. We are not to fall weary. We're not to fall by the wayside, or we are not to be negligent in our responsibilities. Um, so to the best of our ability, we are to do our part in safeguarding our marriage this year. And just because I'm saying this year, that does not mean that it's limited to only 2024. Know that the things that we uh, uh, implement or that we begin to do, we want to continue to build upon and build upon year after year, day after day, moment after moment. We want to continue to exercise uh, our faith and our belief in the Lord and, and what his words say pertaining to our marriage it, for the rest of the years that he has assigned us to each other. Amen. Amen. You have something you want to do? Mm -mm. once, once we get into it, then it, it'll probably come up. Okay. Because you said we are the safeguard. You want couples to go deeper mm -hmm. in safeguarding their marriage mm -hmm. 2024. Mm -hmm. Right. And so okay. some of the ways that, you know, Patrick, it's so funny when I, when that question came up, um, I, I, <laughs> I only wrote down, when the topic came up, I only wrote down how to safeguard your marriage 2024. Mm -hmm. But then I just gave you the reasons why it's important for us to do that. So now I want to give some practicality as to how to do that. Okay. And one of the ways that we can safeguard our marriage is to walk in agreement with each other as best we can with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Let me go back. We, that, let, me write, let, me, let me say, excuse me, what I actually said. If you believe your marriage is in need of coaching, Shamika and I are certified marriage and life coaches. Just log on to our website, www.hiswifeherhusband.net to book your discovery call. Wives, if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, put his wife in the notes section. Husbands, if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, put her husband in the notes section. Husbands and wives, if you are looking for marriage coaching as a couple, put his wife, her husband, in the notes section. Remember, our purpose is to help you build and sustain your marriage from a biblical perspective. So go on over to www.hiswifeherhusband.net to schedule your discovery call today to walk in agreement with the word of God together. Gotcha. So we are in a covenant relationship and in this covenant relationship of marriage in order for it to be most effective and it to be, um, to, uh, for it to, I said, to be, to be successful, mm -hmm, to be successful. It is, it is two individuals becoming one walking together as one so so to add to that walking because i, I want to add it because i'm analytical mm -hmm. walking with god together as one yes so so the god peace and i know you say if we don't even mention god but god is whatever but mm -hmm. i think it has to be mentioned and from that in that particular yeah. uh sentence that it has to be mentioned that we are walking together with God, and I, I guess that would be one of the things that we have to ask our spouse, like really find out where's the spouse's relationship with God. That's going to be really big. It's critical mm -hmm. with safeguarding the marriage mm -hmm. from a from a Christian uh, point of view, you know, yes. from a biblical perspective. Yes, yeah. yes. And and so when I say walk in agreement, that does not mean when I say walk in agreement with the Word of God together. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that situations and circumstances may not come up that you may disagree about. But this is when you go to the word of God together to see what it is that the Lord say do about this pertaining right. to this. Uh, and again, there are things that uh, you may face that may not be uh, verbatim in the scripture, but you want to find as close as possible how to get close to it right but there's so for me it's like even even when i think we were talking in the barbershop the other day i think it was the barbershop and i was saying that there are times that was here at the house that the the bible won't specifically say oh we were talking about jesus saying that he is god mm -hmm. and contextually he did not specifically say but when he told the the the, the um the the religious leaders 
um, I forgot what the not the I am text, but that was one. They're both in John, but they knew he was saying he was God, and they were saying he was like, "Well, for my works, are you trying to you know trying to stone me for work? No, not because of your works, because you blaspheme. You a mere man saying saying that you are God. So contextually, he didn't specifically say that, but reading the the testimony of the the religious leaders. We knew that they knew that, that he, he was, was what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So there are some things in the Bible that might not ne that may not necessarily directly say this is what we're supposed to do in our marriage, mm -hmm. but you can use the wisdom of God, um, the 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 word of God. You can use for me particular Proverbs and Songs of Solomon to kind of help you find or navigate to find that wisdom that you can use for your marriage. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was going to say, I was going to give an example, but I don't want to give that example. Go ahead. Okay. And so um, just a couple of things that I thought about uh, that I, I think that it would be helpful for, for us just to give you some ideas. These are scripture references. Uh, I'm not going to, well, I guess I will, but it, the scripture tell us to love one another. That's in John 13, 34. That's something that we can do today. Like from this day forward, these are things that we can do to safeguard, again, our marriage. Now, this, this, these particular scriptures are for one another, meaning like this is the building of the church. But surely if the Lord commanded us to do it to brothers and sisters, he is, it, it, he would be okay to do this with your spouse. Right. Like this is it. Like you, it, the, the scripture would not tell you to love your sister or brother and then. You not show love to toward. To your, your own spouse. Not so the same type of love because mm -hmm. you know that any different, different dynamics, loves. Yes. But yeah. it can be, it can be. The apply. love you give to your spouse is not to be shared with another. However, the love that you uh, was serious about this. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, because people, the people, people will take what I say, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying because you do that with your. With the love you give to your spouse is not the love that you give to Brother Joe on the street. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But what I am saying is, if the Lord has given a general uh, command or instruction for us to do that, it is not then cut off when you get home uh, to your spouse. Let's say that you are living with an unbelieving spouse, um, and you are going to church, and you would do whatever it is that the pastor or those that are in uh, over an auxiliary, like a women's ministry or men's ministry or whatever, ask you to do. You will lovingly do it, at, you know, as, as unto the Lord. But then when you get home to your spouse, then all of a sudden, as unto the Lord, cuts off. It shouldn't be like that, especially if they're not asking you to do anything that would be against uh, God's instruction to you. Mm -hmm. So getting your spouse a cool cup of water, that is a way of showing love and kindness. And you don't have to have a text verbatim that say at ten o'clock give him a cool cup of water. Right. You know. So that that takes communication. That takes um, it takes. I'm gonna say this word. I don't, I don't think this is the best word, uh, but it takes risk, because I'm risking the rejection. I'm risk. I'm taking the risk of receiving rejection mm -hmm. when I try to do my best to safeguard. My, and I think that becomes the hard part in the marriage when, so, yeah, we're supposed to walk, walk together in Christ, mm -hmm. individually mm -hmm. in Christ, so we can walk together in love. Mm -hmm. But when I try to safeguard my marriage, but my spouse is not, it can become exhausting mm -hmm. doing it. And you, you're, you're better experienced at doing that than I am because whatever the case you know I was some some different but that's a hard thing to do I think it's the, no I think it's the right thing to do I just think it's a difficult thing to do but nonetheless it should be done because this is your covenant this is the covenant you've made with this particular person before God and before people mm -hmm. you know and so saying? now that goes back to even what I was sharing earlier when we started this year I believe that the word of the Lord is for us to dig a little deeper. 
So, yeah, you're going to run the risk. Yeah, you may face the rejection. Yeah, you may be abandoned. Yeah, you may be forsaken. Like, you may experience these hardships. But nevertheless, we have to show up to do what it is that the Lord has instructed us to do, mm -hmm. which is to love one another. Mm -hmm. He did not say that it will always be picture-perfect circumstances and situations, but he is asking us to dig a little bit deeper. Like, e even though, um, and, and then I, I would like to even challenge us as spouses to just stop and reflect. This uh, this resistant, is this something that maybe we have perpetuated, right? You said this resistant? The resistant that we may face, is this something okay, that maybe okay, mm -hmm. we perpetuated? Like, mm -hmm. did we cultivate an environment of, I don't want it because when I would give you something, it will always come with a backlash or it will always come with something extra than just it being just an act of kindness. Like, when you do go the extra mile, let it be just that an extra mile. Hmm. Like I'm not looking for it to come from you, but I am expecting at some point for these seeds of love and kindness to return to me what I when I need it from you. So that would that would go into I think it's one of our one of our earlier videos mm -hmm. where we were talking about give a hundred percent and expect zero back. One hundred zero. So well it's one hundred so so that's kinda it's so I'm giving 100 regardless if you give me anything back or not. Yes, sir. However, I do expect something back. Like a farmer doesn't sow without expecting to get Correct. something back. But in this case, I'm doing everything I can regardless of what the, 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 re re the type the, of return. Uh, the, the reaction the reaction or the response, or response would be. And from listen, you. and this That's is the deep. thing. Yes, That's and, and you ready? This is the That's thing. Tough. That's tough. And th now you said something, Pastor Pat. I'm sorry. You said something, Pat. I'm sorry. But they dig deep. They go like you said. That's deep. And that's what I'm saying. God said, yeah. go deeper. And so this yeah. is the thing. You ready? When we do these acts of kindness to our spouses, mm -hmm. this is unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's to Patrick. But this is my worship mm -hmm. to you, Lord. You asked me to love today. You asked me to do just one more kind thing. You asked me to do one more extra sauce thing. <laughs> and, and, and just not expecting anything in return. You're talking about dying to the flesh. Yeah. That's a way to die to the flesh. Yeah. Into, I, I'm talking about in your own home. Yeah. You know, it's like... Oh, they came from a long day of work, and you know, well, let me, let me, let me, let me rub their feet. I'm just giving some things so, out there. So, you don't have so, to do this they now. were mean to me this morning before they went to work. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming home mm -hmm. from a long day's work. Mm -hmm. I remember how how mean they were. They used profanity towards mm -hmm. me. They they didn't they didn't kiss me and tell me they loved me. They and disregarded they me. They disrespect mm -hmm. like seriously disrespected me as they went out. Yeah. And when they come back and their feet tired, rub their feet. Yeah. That's what you're asking. Yeah. That's yeah. deep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying like let's go the extra mile. And even I and here's another one. Now I did say love one another, but another uh instruction or uh one another scripture is pray for one another. Mm. So your spouse is going through this morning. We don't know what you don't know what they may face on the job, or they, or you may know that they just they just I don't know. It's just a difficult place and difficult spot. If they are going through, I'm not saying excuse the behavior. What I am saying is just where I would normally respond or reply with a pop off. Mm -hmm. Let me pray for you, mm -hmm. Lord Patrick. May be going through something that he. Didn't ha he didn't have time to express to me, and it hurt me. Like now, and, I'm, and this is another thing. I am not saying to be dismissive of your feelings, that pain that you may feel, that of that offense that you may have felt. It is exactly that. But anyway, you know, you want to, uh, so you experience uh, uh, whatever you're going through, and you may not know what it is, but your normal response is to to just snap out, to snap, to, to pop off at the mouth and just, you know, you go back at them and do the do the do the do. But if we are uh, professing to be, uh, to go, if we are professing to be children of God and we are 
taking or, or accepting the challenge to dig a little bit deeper, to let our roots run deeper in our faith so that the fruit that we are expecting that will come forth, then guess what? When I would pop off at the mouth, I'm going to pop off in prayer. Amen. I'm going to go <laughs> to the one who knows exactly what I feel and how yeah. I felt. And he will, he will do what needs to be done. He will rectify this situation. He will vindicate is the word that's coming to my mind. He will vindicate us. And what I mean by that is he may give you to remain silent or he will give you that soft word to speak. He may give you that action to do because another one uh, now that pray for one another is in James 5, 15. But he also may give you to serve one another. That's in Galatians 5, 13. See, these are things that look not to you. I know we live in a very uh, narcissistic, narcissistic? narcissistic. We live in a very narcissistic uh, environment and culture. But I do want uh, these, these one another's. He didn't ask you to serve yourself, not at this time. Now, I'm not saying that you are not supposed to give yourself self-care. Right. I am not saying that. You are supposed to make sure that you love and tend well to you. However, you are to turn and tend well to your spouse to make sure that, that you have done all you can to make them the better person, the best version of themselves that God will have for them to be. And that requires a level of sacrifice. Again, this is to another. This may require a level of, of quiet prayer and meditation. Lord, how can I help my spouse? How can I help my husband be the man you created him to be? Lord, is he all that, is he maximizing? Is he really tapping into that uh, kinetic energy? Is he really doing his potential? Mm -hmm. how, can I, how can I spur him on to greater works? Mm -hmm. And the same thing is, how can, he, how can the husband encourage his wife on to great works? Love still works. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, um, so the, the serving thing mm -hmm. is, this is one of the things that we've done, we've actually done mm -hmm. in our marriage. Um, I'll admit, though, it was, it does, it was then. We hadn't, well, we, you know, we, we hadn't had a, a really big, we hadn't had arguments in a while. But we hadn't really had a big issue. We didn't have a really big issue in 2023. Praise like God. That, Praise that God. That was Okay, anyway, so typically what we, because I was just thinking, mm -hmm. so when we, when we are at odds with one another, when Shamika and I are at odds with one another, um, the serving part is what we do. And we still try to, or we still, not try to, we still serve one another. Like, I still, the things that I would do when, when she's doing, when she's doing right by me, uh, okay, the things that... <laughs> When when we're getting along, even when we're not getting along, I put forth effort to make sure I still do the, that thing. Now I'll admit, for me, it's still it's uh, tr it's troubling. It's not troubling. It's tough. Challenging. It's mm -hmm. challenging. That's the right word, mm -hmm. because I'm upset at her. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm like I'm really mad about, you know, either something she said or something she did. Or and didn't do the negligence. Oh yeah, up. that mm -hmm. and so serving that. So so her telling you or telling you guys that that's for sure that's something that we've done, and I would say um, it proved to have fruit mm -hmm. to to still like it's 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 a fruitful work to do it, especially. When you're not getting along, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to cook him dinner or I'm not going to cook her dinner. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to make sure, as a matter of fact, I'm going to cook their favorite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At this time when we're not getting along, yeah. you, you know, and that, and it's, it's, whew, it's a tough, like if that's, but that's the thing. And I always say, if you want the marriage, yeah. if you don't want the marriage now, wh what we're giving you or the advice, remember this channel is 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 done to give solutions. Yeah. So we're not about 
airing out our drama, so to speak. But I mean, but we'll not, not we'll opposed, we'll be transparent. Yeah. We're not gonna be naked, but we'll be transparent yeah. enough to give you solutions. So if you don't want it, then don't do it. And and we we can't say, I, I just don't I don't think we can. We can't say with one hundred percent guarantee this is gonna happen. But we are saying to put yourself on the best side, the trajectory to give yourself mm-hmm. the best opportunity for you to have a successful marriage. These are things we're saying we sh- you should do. Yeah, and the likelihood of of you getting the results is more favorable. Correct. When you do it God's way. Correct. And we are only here to give you our testimony to say that we've tried it and it's true. Right. You know, now whether whether we tried it <laughs> or not, it was still going to be true. <laughs> but but but, but those thing, we we both you, wanted it though. Uh-huh. And, and they go back to their walking in agreement with the word of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had to work in agreement. And something that you said that it was interesting. Uh, you was talking about we was talking about the service and sometimes y'all ready? You're not ready for this, but this is so good. You may have to serve your way through that hard place. Hmm. Serve your way through. You may have to pray your way through. You may have to pray and serve your way through. Why? Because that's not something that you want to do. Hmm. Because they are a difficult person. (laughs) And just in case you may have forgotten, you too are a difficult person. <laughs> you right. are a difficult person to someone, right? Yeah. And, and and the truth of the matter is the Lord loved us enough. He loved us through our sin. He loved us through our disobedience and our hard place. He loved us through our unfaithfulness. He teaches us how to be faithful. He teaches us how to honor his word and obey it and esteem it above everything else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So again, sometimes... Or this time, let me say that this time you're gonna have to serve your way through. And um, and the other thing that I would like to, I guess, another way to safeguard your marriage is to pray and believe the word of God together. Read the word of God uh, for the report of the Hmm. saints that have gone through. I know a lot of times we don't hear about it, but. When we see the relationship, let's say with Abraham and Sarah, that's a marital relationship. That was a covenant relationship mm-hmm. that they were walking through together mm-hmm. and believing God together. Like you may want to go and read th- read how they uh, got to where God got to God's promise uh, as a couple. So you want to go through that. You want to uh, look at um, uh, <laughs> what you laughing at. I'm just thinking about if you modern day that story. Yeah. That. That he, you said Abraham and Sarah, right? Uh huh. That not only he got another girl pregnant, mm-hmm. um, he lied about her being his wife, mm-hmm. and he was about to let her, like he, he dropped off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To to preserve himself. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So my my and my, and my reason for saying that this and, 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 and he took her away. Because, I mean, if he left his father, like, I'm pretty sure there were some people that she was related to in the country as well. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. That's and crazy. so you have, you know, you have a, 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 a covenant relationship, a yeah. marriage that was going on, and they had real life happenings. Yeah. And I know a lot of times people try to discredit the word of God. They try to say that it is not, uh, a pr- not I won't say approachable, but it's not relevant. It's old uh, fashioned. It's old fashioned. Mm-hmm. It, they, they, they can't connect. Let me tell you, if you have the same Bible that I have, mm-hmm. it's real life stuff. These were not picture perfect. They didn't get the status Correct. of, That's good. of saint, saint status. By being uh, perfect, perfect. And, and, and going unscathed through this life. Correct. No. That's good. They lost some things. They had to let go of some things. They had to remove themselves. They had to dig deeper even for themselves. Ask Jacob about it. He had to wrestle with the Lord. So I'm just saying. Mm. It's some things that we're going to have to go through and endure in order to experience uh, the fruit that God has has uh, stored for us, and this is not this 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 calling of uh, of being a child, a woman, a man of God. 
this is not a cheap call. Mm. I know a lot of people try to minimize it and try to diminish its value, but no, this that is not so. And this is not for everybody. This is a this this walk is a very narrow way. Yeah. It is very narrow That's and it is very is tight, narrow. meaning that look, it's it's gonna require some dark days. It's gonna require some, some lonely, wilderness. Some lonely days, Come wilderness, on. wilderness days. Could wilderness moments, yes. Yeah. And then by the same token, it's gonna have some mountaintops, but guess what? Very few people are even physically equipped to even take their trek up that mountaintop. But if you know that God has called you, and we used to sing this old song back in the days, if my mother won't go, if my father won't go, if my sister won't go, if my brother won't go, I will go if I got to go by myself. Got to go by myself. We got to, we got to get that in our mind. Okay. So that's another thing. Oh, and I did, I did one of my favorite, if this is weird, but one of my favorite marriage stories is Nabal and Abigail. Mm -hmm. Read the story, y'all. Find it and read it. I'm talking about you talking about a marriage. She was married to a fool. <laughs> it's what the scriptures say. I didn't make it up. It's in the script. So what I'm saying is we're saying we're giving you uh uh from a biblical perspective, I want I wanted to make sure that I that I brought up the fact that there are real live marriages that's in the scripture that you can learn from. Ananias and Sapphira, New Testament, learn from it. Mm -hmm. Now, in some cases, you better say, well, now, look, because I, I want my life. Right. So, anyway, you have uh, examples of marriage relationships that you can learn from. Uh, you have uh, Naomi, where she lost her husband and her sons, where it was like death was happening everywhere. You have to, you, you can only imagine what she may have felt what she was, excuse me, going through during that tough season. What I'm saying is that there is always an example of some woman or a man of God that have gone through and overcome to encourage you to hold on and overcome, serve God, and serve your way through. Amen. And, and, amen. And those stories aren't prescriptions. Those stories are descriptive. Mm -hmm. So you can take those scriptures and take those 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 historical documents and find the principle or find something that okay I haven't tried that before and that was successful in context and then you use that for your marriage and 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 see where it works and see how it works and just begin to utilize everything you can um According to the scriptures, to, scriptures to your marriage. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah yep. that's good. So the other thing I have, and again, we're talking about how to safeguard uh, your marriage this year. And so another one is to study the scriptures together and share insights and revelations that you get from the word. So like th that goes back to you read the word together, but you can read the word of God on your own. And those things that you get that maybe uh, encouraged you then you can turn and share that with your spouse. And one of the uh, scriptures, again, about one another is they stir up, uh, provoke, or stimulate one another to love and good works. Mm -hmm. That's Hebrews 10 and 24. You tell me that if you don't get a good word from the Lord during your devotion time and you share it with your spouse, that it will not uh, give life to them. It just may it be just the thing that. Right. that they need to keep them going, to keep them uh, encouraged. And that's another, excuse and, me, and hold, on, hold on, Patrick, hold on, hold on, hold on, one more. You got encourage one another is one of them, and that's in First Thessalonians 5, 11. And, and that means, I forgot, I forgot what you said, because it was going to go with the other thing. Um, being con God, what did you say? What was the scripture before that? Uh, it was Hebrews ten twenty four, and it says, "Stir up and to provoke, to provoke and stimulate one another to love and good works." If you don't do that, oh yeah, yeah. So if you don't do that, so I forgot how I was going. I was going to tie it in, but being consistent. So, so I was talking this morning to to Shamika about to to be to be lazy. Mm -hmm. it, it's you can do nothing and be lazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. However, if you do nothing, that's the result you will get. Nothing. But to be successful, whether it be weight loss, whether it be uh, health, whether it be finances, marriage, it takes being 
intentional consistently. That means, yes, I got to get up and do it again. Today. Yes, I got to get up and do it tomorrow. Yes, I got to get up and do it next week. Yes, I got to get up and do it next month. Like, I have to be intentional about being consistent at the acts I'm doing to better myself or to get my marriage, to give my marriage the best possible results for success. Mm -hmm. Best outcome. The best outcome. Mm -hmm. So this work that we're talking about, it's work. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't want, if you don't want the marriage, if you don't want it, don't if you do can nothing. Care less, yeah. Do nothing. And you're going to get nothing fruit. But if you're looking <laughs> for something different, you have to do something different. But again, here's my word. You have to be consistent at the intentionality of your, uh, with your actions. Mm -hmm. That means if I'm intentional, I'm intentional about what I'm, tr what I'm doing. Like this, I'm loving on purpose. Yeah. I'm serving on purpose. Yeah. I am, what did you say it was? Encouraging. I am encouraging on purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to I'm see the best. I'm praying on purpose. I'm praying on purpose. I mm -hmm. want to see my spouse in the best possible way. Or I want to, I want to as much as possible, build bring my spouse up, up or mm -hmm. build my, yeah, build my spouse. I want to build and sustain my marriage. How do you do that? So By building and sustaining your spouse. So I am going <laughs> to, mm -hmm. I am going to do everything. I'm going to be intentional about being consistent about the acts and the actions that I do or that I put into my marriage. Amen. Okay. And so then another thing that you can do, let's say, oh, what I, I just write down what I uh, wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that would be to send encouragement, uh, send encouragement reminders to your spouse because they may be in a place where, uh, again, where they work or where they may be volunteering or whatever. They may just be in a pretty low place in their life and they just need an encouraging word. So one of the ways that you can safeguard your marriage from affairs or emotional hmm. uh, affairs is by always sending them a, I'm thinking about you and know that God has a plan for your life and I'm looking forward to sharing that plan with you. Like be creative. I love how you just said that, like be intentional about that. And so it's not just physical intimacy that's uh that's important uh, in our marriage. It's emotional, it's mental, it's spiritual intimacy. It's us sharing uh, these intimate and delicate, uh, the, these private, personal experiences with one another. Right. If you are glad, share that. If you are experiencing fear, share that. Like, and, and it's not to say that you're looking for them, again, to be Jesus, but you are looking to share life with your spouse. What was that? Do what? Send what now? Send encouragement, reminders, or texts to your spouse. Oh, okay. Uh huh. It can be emails. It can be you and know if, however and, 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 and oh and wait if, wait wait. If he like if he like your inner thigh, send him a picture of your inner thigh. Mercy. For him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's that physical intimacy. Be like that's mm -hmm. yeah that's the that's the creative or the intimacy like there's no physical but hey listen. Me and me and my thigh thinking about you, boo. You know as what I'm saying? As soon as I get home, <laughs> I, I make it up to you. Oh, okay, gotcha. Patrick, I do what I got to do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Back to the point. Um, so then the other thing is do acts of kindness to your spouse and have fun, dream and plan this year out mm -hmm. and make it happen together. That will safeguard your marriage. Why? If you know that you are willing to work hard, you've been intentional about working hard. You've been intentional about planning it out mm -hmm. and experiencing this plan or this, or uh, these goals or these objectives that you have set out to accomplish together. You tell me that you won't walk in agreement to make sure that that's done. And just in case you may think that I am off, one of the scriptures say live in harmony with one another. That's Romans 12 and 16. Another one is build up one another. That's Romans 14 and, and 19. And oh, and let's not forget to forgive one another. Forgive one another. Where is that? Ephesians 4, 2 and 32. Yeah. So I'm just saying, let's safeguard. <laughs> let's do it. 
And let's just see what the end looked like. Amen. Amen. All right. I think Patrick is uh, telling me to wrap it up. He's he's uh, leaning forward and moving, and he's saying, now, look, it's time to wrap it up. This has been long enough. So I pray that you have been encouraged and inspired to uh, rebuild or to build uh, to sustain your marriage from this biblical perspective that if maybe last year you just kind of like fell out of, f fell out with the word of God, I'm asking you to pick it back up and to continue to be faithful mm -hmm. to it because God's word is faithful to you. He has not stopped doing exactly what uh, he and being who he is and doing what he does. Amen. Amen. So anyway, uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, mm -hmm. I'm asking you to please subscribe. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to please share it with uh, a, a, a dear friend of yours or maybe someone that you know that's married and that just needs some encouragement. Don't think that, oh, well, whatever they got it. No, they just may need to hear it from someone else to just get back in uh, engaged in their marriage, to right. be back intentional. Yeah. And uh, if you was it, subscribe like, and like it. Give like us a it. thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. And listen. As well as hit the bell notification so that when we drop new videos, You'll be the first one to get those. What he said. All okay. Right. But that thumbs up, it's, it's really encouraging. So, hey, make our day brighter by giving us the thumbs up. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Take care.